The history of rock and roll couldn't be documented without Bob Bruin's photographs. How many bands have you shot? Thousands. Thousands. I don't count. <laughs> in his archives in New York's Greenwich Village, you'll find shots of almost every major rock act, like Led Zeppelin. It was kind of a snapshot, mm -hmm. uh, but it's turned out to be one of the most iconic pictures that uh, you know really sums up the excess of the 70s. Uh, you know, the plane's so big it doesn't even fit in the picture. <laughs> the Who's drummer, Keith Moon. Uh, this is my first Rolling Stone cover. Just a simple moment at Carnegie Hall. And Tina Turner. And this is one picture while the strobe light was flashing. Yeah. So this is what Tina does in one second. <laughs> For the 66-year-old Gruen, it all started, in a way, with this picture of Bob Dylan at the Newport Folk Festival in 1965. That's when the young photographer got his first press pass. How did that feel to have the pass for the first time? Uh, really good. You know, I had to kind of talk my way into it because when I first got there, they said no. But my mom told me that no is not an answer to accept, but it could be the beginning of an interesting conversation. <laughs> his parents were both Long Island lawyers but photography was his mother's hobby. Your mom gave you your first camera? Yeah, when I was eight, she gave me a brownie Hawkeye. She taught him how to develop film and print pictures. Immediately, Gruen was hooked. His early jobs were for small music magazines, usually working freelance for as little as $5. But he had a knack for making his subjects comfortable. I've been with a lot of photographers where you just want to run out of the room. You just don't want to be in front of their camera. And with Bob, it's just, you know, oh, Bob's here. <laughs> Debbie Harry of Blondie met Gruen in the early 70s. Bob may not have been like the biggest well-known photographer um, in, you know, the whole world, um, but in our world, he was, you know, he was very important. Where's this from? Uh, this was at Max's, Kansas City. Uh -huh. This was kind of early on, 76. This picture really, I don't know, broke the world open for me. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming down. Gruen's work, now collected in his book, Rock Scene, includes perhaps his most famous session with John Lennon. Where were these shot? Uh, John had an apartment on East 52nd Street. Mm -hmm. uh, he was still separated from Yoko at the time in 74. Gruen became Lennon's personal photographer after the former Beatle moved to New York. I used to wear a t-shirt like this all the time, the New York City t-shirt. And I'd given John a shirt about a year earlier. And we were up on the roof with the skyline behind us, and I just kind of said, uh, do you sell that shirt I gave you last year? Uh, we had no idea at the time that it was going to become such a well-known picture. This image mm. is in just about every souvenir shop in New York City. Yeah, it gets around. It gets around. The shot is usually reproduced without Gruen's permission. We found it at a souvenir stand by the ferry to the Statue of Liberty. How do you feel when you see this? Uh, well, I wish I was getting, you know, a percentage of the sales, <laughs> but I feel a compliment, actually, you know, because these people can steal anything from anybody. I mean, they haven't paid for any of these pictures. Right. So I kind of take it as a compliment because they like my pictures so much that they continually steal it over and over again. <laughs> then we headed over to the site of another of Gruen's memorable shots of Lennon. And whose idea was it to come out to the Statue of Liberty? Uh, my idea, actually. That's one of the reasons I'm really proud of that picture. That one was something I thought up because the government was trying to throw John Lennon out of the country. And I thought that being at the Statue of Liberty would be a really good symbol of welcome to America, that we should be welcoming people like John Lennon. How long were you out here that day? Uh, about an hour, hour and a half at the most, I think. That day in 1974, Lining Lennon up with the statue proved to be a tricky shot. Yeah, you see, how do you get somebody right here to be this size and the statue do that? I don't know, that's the magic. <laughs> is that one of your favorite pictures? Uh, it is one of my favorite pictures because it has so much meaning, because it is about peace and freedom. And I think that's the most important things we can talk about. Tourists often imitate Gruen's picture. See, there's people putting a peace sign up. Right. And the photographer himself now gets recognized. Hi, Bob. Um, Hi. My name's Putini, and uh, I took I just took that picture, <laughs> which is uh, uh -huh. your yep. <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of people do that. I appreciate that.
Bob Gruen, who's become friends with many of his subjects, says he never really saw taking pictures as a job. Yeah, I wasn't there on assignment. I was there because I wanted to be there. As he says in his book, it's not just a collection of my work. It's also a family album of my life.